Hey guys, Scott here, Fine Baron Craftsman. Today we're going to go over one of the one of the skills that I have that I feel like I'm more of an expert in and professional. You know, kind of getting to that line where I think I could really do better than average in almost a, a professional job. Um, but it's all about the tools, okay? Painting. I enjoy painting. It's quiet. It's not loud. No hammers smashing. You get on a ladder, you get a little paint brush, you get a paint pan, you know, a roller, and you just, it's like you and yourself just quiet thinking and you can just paint, oh, paint the day away. I, I, I'm i okay with that. I don't need like 10 guys yelling, you know, cutting sawdust. And I got over that, I think, a little bit more uh, later in life. Paint, right? Probably I consider myself a professional painter. I did it for about, I don't know, on and off for 15 years. Side jobs, my own stuff, works for people for years through high school. It's like the first thing that, that I got handed when I got on the job site. Here, paint the wall, you know, paint white on white, just prime everything. You know, and I just enjoyed it. Um, the biggest thing for me is tools. What tools are you using to make this work? Now, spray guns big thing now people can really cover a lot of ground go fast there is prep work i don't like doing the taping and prep work i could do it i always felt like you know you're going to do it you want to do it one time and move on i don't need to sit there and put tape up and um i wasn't gifted the ability to use tape from the guy i worked with it was like you thought it was like a little bit of a waste of money if you can't paint a straight line i don't need you he didn't say that but i think that's what it was implied like there's no reason to play with the tape. Some people need to do it. Some people do a great job with it and probably should do it in some some places it's called for. Uh, get more to art stuff with the stencils and stuff. Or So first thing is, what is this, the dollar, two dollar brush? This has a purpose. You know, maybe you're using oil-based paint Oil base is not easy to wash out with water. You got to use some kind of a solvent or whatever to get rid of it. Paint thinner, acetone. I don't know what guys use mineral spirits. Uh, pure bristle made in China. Three inch. They make all different sizes. If you want to use this, use this. Crafts around the house. You, you know, one time use. Maybe you're not an avid painter. Maybe this is the only brush you need for that project. You throw it away. That's what I would do with this. Use it once. Toss it. You're going to get hair out of this. As you're painting, the paint will pull hairs out of this and it'll get stuck in whatever you're painting. So you got to futz around and it's annoying. I, I kind of put a stop to that like immediately the first time I used this. I don't like this. I enjoy these purdy brushes, okay? Handcrafted in the USA. Professional painting tools. White bristle. Soft. This is 100% natural white bristle. Oil-based paints, stains, and clears. Provides an ultra-smooth finish. So just pop this open. Keep these cases. People throw them out. Keep them. After you wash the brush, put it back in the case, and it keeps the bristles nice. Okay? If you go washing this out and the bristles are like this and they're resting on something in a cardboard box or whatever you're doing, I like to hang them on the wall. That's why they got a hole here. You know. And keep the bristles together. You get these furs. I'll show you at a later one. This is where it gets real messy. Because you can't keep these hairs straight. But um, wash the brushes out correctly. You know, ma manufacturer specs are probably on the, on the back of what to do to clean up. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into the, the upkeep of this stuff. But purdy brushes, okay? Um, this is a... Wooster. I found this at Ace or Hammond Lumber. I guess like different hardware stores carry this. I don't know. Maybe Lowe's, Home Depot. I don't know. Find, if, you, if you want to try them. I don't really see much of a difference of, as far as the quality is concerned. I'm not sure where they're made. Um, to each of their own. You know, maybe get, get this if you want to get this. They're expensive, you know, but if you're going to use it multiple times to take care of it, then it's worth the investment. Like a brush like this will last me you know, three, four, five months if I'm doing it every day, you know. But some, some, some guys will last for a year. Some guys dedicate brushes to specific types of paint. Like this is just a semi-gloss brush. 
semi-gloss meaning the uh the sheen of the paint you know maybe you do doors with this what's important about the bristles is you want to first figure out if you're going to do a flat or an angle the angle has its purpose and i'll show you some angle brushes i got a flat here a flat there also the tip the softness of that tip that's when the paint gets loaded in here and that's your detail work when you're getting close to something you're getting close with the tip of the brush like when you're loading this brush you're loading it up you know to here you're dipping into paint some guys like to edge off edge off make a sharp point i just blot it on make sure it's not runny no drips you got nice paint like i'll use a benjamin moore um i think we use a lot of benjamin moore ultra hide um like paints like Glidden's back in the day would be runny. So, you know, get the right paint for the right brush. But, you know, you blot it on there and you get a good amount and you get the paint on the wall and you move around and you could smooth it out. It's hard to explain. Maybe I could do a live, you know, we do a wet run. This is a dry run here. Um, different brushes. This is an angle. This is a purdy. Angle brush. You get into those little areas, you know, and the thickness matters. Like if you're running like a, um, whatever this is, two inch, two and a half inch, um, you run in a two inch molding, two and a half inch molding, three inch molding, you know, you grab a brush that fits. You know, you don't want to get a brush that's huge and it's hard to use. And you don't want to get a little dainty brush, like it's only using half of this, to do a big molding. You end up with more streaks. Get the brush to match the surface of the material that you're using, like this right here, like, you know, see how it covers that whole area? If this was a piece of wood. Uh, purdy. And this is like a thick one here. This is something else. High, XL high capacity. So I guess you're loading this up. So you feel some weight in this. It's got a, a thickness to it. I like the purdies. Okay. You hang them on the wall. You let them drip dry. Got the hooks here, right? The, the, okay, keep the bristles straight. Then you get into these little guys with like these little stubby handles you know you want to get in there and you don't have the space maybe you're trying to get somewhere like above a cabinet and the ceiling heights right here and you're trying to get like a piece of trim and you don't want to knock this extra long handle on stuff when you're trying to get in somewhere because a lot of times you're, you're over here painting it with like this this close to your the heel of your brush you're right here so you don't need all this all the time sometimes this is for your you know you get your your nice reach going you know so it's not your arm get this little stick but this is good it's got a thumb hold here index finger it's a smaller brush you can see that okay it's a more used up brush see i'm trying to wash these brushes and this is you know me being lazy not cleaning up back in the day i have a really clean brush as this paint line creeps up it gets closer and closer to here and then that excess paint that's not washed out will get hard and it'll start to lock up your brush and you'll only get this much movement at the very end and this will all be like getting stiff so i like to flip them over spread them out and wash them with water going in this way runs it out of the back run it away you know keep working it when you're in when you're washing it out washing it's important this is a newer version of that same brush this is a wooster it's a two inch i guess polyester is the uh, material for the for the bristles but this is really light like it's like air right here i'm barely feeling it on my fingertip and my hands are cold but this is what gets you close to stuff you know you kind of like you got to work the paint into areas that are tight and you do that see that little pulsing i can show you oh this is a big boy ah, boom i use this to stain a deck with cabot stain make it clear See, I washed this out. Similar to the bristles that you got in this, but these don't come out as much. I wasn't finding that they were coming out. So it's a better built quality thing. Maybe it's glued better. Keep the case, like I said. All stains, water-based, oil-based, threaded handle extension pole use. You could use your extension pole on this. Oh, that's a good idea, right? Never thought of that. So instead of standing uh, on your knee, uh, instead of kneeling, you could stand and you could maybe do your deck, dip into the can and stand up. Here, I'm standing there doing it like that. So who's a professional? I should have used a stick. Boom. Now, this is the, I guess, the reject, the, the defective one at this point. 
She hasn't been washed good. Her bristles are wild, okay? It's hard to see. When you go to use this and you're trying to paint on this surface and this, you know, obviously you dip the paint and it'll hold it together. But what I notice with these bristles is, is after a while, they start to walk out like that. And it's hard to keep them in check and you wind up start pulling them off. Cause you're like, get out of here, get out of here. You start cutting them. And the brush, the, brush, the brush is reaching its end of its life at that point, like right here. I pull that one out. Like it's got all paint cacked up on it. Might have been a different paint that I used. Didn't wash out good a couple of times. This had a lot of miles on it, you could tell. You don't want to be working with just this tip, and then these bristles are touching your ceiling. You know, you got black on your wall and white ceiling, and the bristles got a hair of uh, paint on it, and now you're going to drag that across your ceiling. You better get your rag out and hope that you got a good washable ceiling paint. So these are just the quick basic tips. Um, if you want, 